Hey, shouldn't you be helping out more around the house? If this is the type of spouse you're going to be, maybe it's better if you leave. My mother-in-law snapped, her words sharp and her stare piercing. I was taken aback by her harsh tone. Beside her, my sister-in-law chimed in dismissively. You always look exhausted and seem to get nothing done. Feeling overwhelmed, I turned to my husband, Matthew, for support. This is too much, don't you think? Your mom and sister are being harsh, I said, hoping for some understanding. Matthew's response only added to my distress. I agree with them, he said bluntly. I'm swamped with work and it's a problem that you're not helping more at home. Besides, things are going well with the new part-time worker. And frankly, you're just slowing us down. Maybe you should find somewhere else to stay. Stunned by Matthew's words, I looked around at the three of them, feeling their judgment weigh heavily on me. A rush of anger surged through me, but I took a deep breath, calmed myself, and replied, I need some time to think. My name is Lori, and I'm 35 years old. I'm dedicated to both my job and managing household chores. It's common for women to work after getting married, and I love my job deeply, aiming to excel in the company I joined right after graduating from college. One morning, as I prepared for work, Matthew came up to me looking worried. Lori, can you take care of this? He handed me a file stuffed with receipts and bills. You should get the cafe's finances in order. I smiled, trying to keep the mood light. Sorry, I'm not good with that stuff, I replied. I had met Matthew while he was working part-time at a cafe I often visited. After several conversations, we started dating and later talked about marriage. Now, he owned the cafe, but despite his business skills, he struggled with the paperwork and frequently asked me to handle it. As I sighed, my mother-in-law piped up, Lori, I'm craving Chinese cuisine tonight. Could you make sure to rinse the rice well? Also, Denise and the kids are visiting this weekend, so we need to plan their meals. Sure, I understand. I nodded, quickly agreeing to her request before hurrying out the door, eager to escape the mounting pressure at home. I was filled with anticipation for my new life with Matthew. However, he soon proposed a change, noting that my mom seemed lonely living by herself. Why don't we all move in together into our big house, he suggested. So now, I live with his mother. To put it gently, she's not exactly skilled in maintaining a household. When we first moved in, I discovered the house was somewhat neglected following the passing of my father-in-law. She had begun to live off a pension, spending most of it on dining out or ordering in, which meant the domestic duties fell to me. Matthew, holding traditional views, seemed to think housework was a woman's responsibility, leaving me to manage everything. Adding to the workload, Matthew's sister, Denise, occasionally dropped by with her children, further expanding my list of tasks. The weekends, which I hoped would offer some respite from the week's fatigue, transformed into hectic periods filled with entertaining and feeding my sister-in-law's kids. Then one day, Denise dropped a major revelation. Lori, I'm getting divorced and will be moving back here with the kids next month, she announced. I was stunned and momentarily speechless. Really? Do you have something to say? She prodded. I managed to reply. It must have been tough. When are you moving? I want to move as soon as possible, she answered. Though surprised by the news of Denise and her children moving in, I harbored a hope that perhaps her presence might make the household chores more manageable. We had a decent relationship and I thought this change might bring us closer and encourage her to pitch in. Despite my optimistic outlook, reality soon set in differently. Perhaps because she was raised in the same manner as my mother-in-law, Denise seemed almost allergic to housework. She spent her days lounging on the sofa, often with a snack in hand, engrossed in the TV. Watching her, I couldn't help but wonder if her aversion to domestic responsibilities had played a role in her marital troubles. Now, with the added tasks of preparing extra meals for her children and packing lunches for kindergarten, my workload had only grown. My hope for assistance from Denise proved futile, a clear miss in my expectations. My free time dwindled rapidly, leaving me to reassess my situation 
and the dynamics within our crowded home. At my job, the workload has ramped up significantly. Every day, I start early, often do overtime, and return home completely drained to find our living space cluttered and barely walkable. This overwhelming scene greets me daily, intensifying my exhaustion. On top of that, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law never miss a chance to question me. Is dinner ready yet? Or why are you home so late? Are common queries I face upon arriving home. When I struggle to keep up with household chores amidst my hectic schedule, they sharply comment, Lori, there's a mountain of laundry waiting. Don't use your busyness as an excuse to slack off. Inside, I'm shouting, I'm trying my best, but I often choose to hold back my words. Before my sister-in-law can respond, she sometimes tries to push me further. Lori, standing up to your mother-in-law is bold, but for the kids' sake, please try harder to prepare homemade meals, she suggests. This prompts me to retort, albeit tiredly. If you have so much free time, why not help out with the chores once in a while? I've even overheard Matthew's sister joking, Ha ha, since Matthew owns a store, Lori doesn't need to work, right? Maybe she should try harder at home. Their words pile on the pressure, making me feel as though I'm expected to do more. One night, at the peak of my stress, I decided it was time to voice my struggles to Matthew. I've been incredibly busy lately, and neither your mother nor your sister is helping out with the chores. It's really hard, I said. Matthew's reaction was sharp. Lori, you're not speaking ill of our family, are you? He asked, his gaze hardening. I braced myself and explained, That's not my intention, but it's challenging to manage everything alone. If you could help out occasionally, it would make things easier for me. I'm busy managing the store. It's not like a regular job. Housework is the wife's responsibility, right? He replied dismissively. Disappointed by his lack of understanding, I sat alone, pondering. Then, an idea struck me. Feeling a burst of determination, I silently pumped my fist in resolve. I grabbed my smartphone, opened my favorite online shopping app, and began adding necessary items to my cart. After completing my purchases, I went to bed feeling a small victory had been achieved, ready to tackle what lay ahead with new tools at my disposal. A few days later, my eagerly awaited electronic household appliances arrived, transforming my daily routine. The delivery included a state-of-the-art washing machine, a robotic vacuum that could navigate every nook and cranny of our home, and a rice cooker that promised perfect rice with minimal effort. Each device felt like a lifeline, promising to make life a bit easier and more enjoyable. While I was setting up the new washing machine, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law walked in, their faces a mix of surprise and curiosity. Wow, Lori, you got such a fancy washing machine. But the old one was still working, wasn't it? My mother-in-law asked, her tone hinting at skepticism. With a calm smile, I responded, The old one was getting slow and this new one can do the laundry much faster. Their attention then shifted to the cleaning robot and the new kitchen gadgets. I've also upgraded these, I explained, showing them the new additions with a bit of pride. These gadgets, from cleaning robots to convenient cooking appliances, were my new allies in managing household tasks more efficiently. Lori, can we talk for a moment? My mother-in-law beckoned me into another room, her voice carrying a note of urgency. As we sat down, the discussion that followed was tense. Why did you buy so many things? She asked sharply. Do you need all these new appliances or is it just to make your life easier? I tried to keep my composure. I thought it would help things run smoother around the house, I replied, trying to sound reasonable yet sensing the brewing discontent. My mother-in-law was quick to counter. Aren't we relying too much on machines? My sister-in-law dismissively waved her hand signaling her agreement with her mother. Despite their pushback, I maintained, the appliances we had were outdated. Matthew is busy with his store, and I thought being more efficient at home could help everyone. Matthew nodded along with his sister, suggesting frugality might be a better path. With a subdued voice, I conceded, maybe you're right. 
But inside, frustration was building. The conversation escalated quickly. Are you even considering our household needs? My mother-in-law challenged. I stumbled over my words, feeling cornered. I am, but I'm just a bit exhausted, I admitted. That's enough, my mother-in-law snapped, her voice filled with disbelief. I can't believe you're our daughter-in-law, my sister-in-law added with a look of disdain. I'll watch over Matthew. We don't need someone like you here. Turning to Matthew for some form of support, all I received was his cold reply. I understand what mom and sis are saying. It's difficult having a wife who... His words trailed off, leaving a chill in the air. As they left the room, I sat there, the weight of their words crushing me, yet the resolve in my heart grew stronger. The new appliances were my choice for a reason, and despite the opposition, I knew they were necessary for managing not just the household, but my sanity as well. Looking at Matthew, my heart sank. He gave a cold smile and said, I have my store, so I decide how to spend my money. But being with someone who spends without thinking might be too hard for me. His words stung, but I kept my composure, looking into his eyes and silently counting to twelve. With a touch of cruelty, he continued, Also, I've noticed things have been going well with the new part-time girl at the store. She's more attractive than you are now. Maybe it's time for you to find a new place to live. A wave of anger rose inside me, but I held it back, took a deep breath, and calmly responded, All right, I'll look for a new home. Finally, you understand. I'll feel much better without you around, he replied smugly. That night, Matthew signed the divorce papers. I moved to a nearby weekly rental with just the essentials and the divorce papers in hand. As I left, no one tried to stop me leaving me to wonder if they had ever really cared about me. After finalizing the divorce at the city office, I found a stylish apartment and started anew. Around the same time, an unexpected opportunity came my way. A promotion to section manager, a role I had previously put off due to my family situation. I embraced this new role with vigor, dedicating myself to my work and feeling a renewed sense of purpose and accomplishment. During one of my busy days, my phone rang. The caller ID showed it was my former mother-in-law. Thinking we had nothing to do with each other anymore, I dismissed the call without checking the message. My new life had begun, and I was not looking back. A year passed, and one relaxing weekend, as I enjoyed my favorite music, my phone rang again. To my surprise, it was my former mother-in-law. Curious about what she could want after all this time, I answered, Hello, is something wrong? Lori, I finally got through. I didn't think you would answer after so many calls, she said, her voice uncertain. Well, it's been a while. What's going on? I asked, keeping my tone neutral yet cautious. She hesitated for a moment, seemingly unsure of how to proceed. Then, she hesitated before asking, How's your new life? Despite her probing tone, I replied cheerfully, It's great! I love my new apartment and work is going smoothly. I even got a promotion and I'm enjoying my freedom. That's good, Lori. Can you come back home? She suddenly asked. Taken aback, I blurted out, Why? We're struggling financially, she admitted, prompting me to think to myself that I had suspected as much. Responding cautiously, I said, Matthew's Cafe only makes about $2,000 a month, right? If no one else in the family works, things could be tough. You know about that? She asked, sounding surprised. Yes, I said. I was fully aware of its financial situation since I handled all the accounting. Matthew pretended to be a successful owner, but he was quite oblivious to the real state of his business. I couldn't help but find it almost laughable how unaware he was. I managed all the finances and procurement, so of course I knew. You knew and didn't tell us? We had no idea you were doing so well in such a big company or that you were contributing so much to the household expenses, my former mother-in-law exclaimed. I admitted, yes, I contributed more than $5,000 every month. Thanks to that, you all managed. The truth was that I had used my salary to cover the gaps in Matthew's business losses. He seemed completely unaware of the situation, and after I left, the reality seemed to have hit hard. 
Lori, can you please come back? She asked again. Curious, I inquired. So how's Matthew's Cafe doing now? She sighed. We might have to close soon and the part-time workers keep quitting. With an inward smirk, I commented on his management style. It's hard to keep it going for long, isn't it? His little bit of pride doesn't help. Not doing proper work, I mean. How many women out there do you think would be willing to support a guy like that? My former mother-in-law was momentarily at a loss for words. I continued somewhat sarcastically. Wait, I'm a bit busy now. Since you left, the house is a mess. It's chaotic with things everywhere, she explained, sounding desperate. Confused, I asked, wait, what do you mean? She described the disarray of their home with belongings scattered everywhere, looking more like a storeroom. Without anyone to cook, they were eating out, which was costing a lot. The washing machine also broke down, she added, painting a picture of a household in complete disarray. Upon hearing that they couldn't afford a new washing machine, I was intrigued. The appliances that I took back, I relied on them, my former mother-in-law confessed. Puzzled, I responded, why is that? Those were mainly for my convenience, and since I purchased them myself, it was okay for me to take them back, right? She hesitantly agreed, yeah, I guess so, but I never realized housework was this challenging. With a tone of resignation, she added, with three adults in the house, how can it be that hard? What are Matthew and your daughter doing? She sounded tired as she continued. As for Matthew, his staff members have been quitting and sales have plummeted. When he found out, he just became downcast and has been lazing around at home. He used to spend his money from the store without any restraint. On top of that, Denise doesn't help at all, she added. She doesn't do anything around the house and even gets her allowance from me. Living on just my pension for the three of us is hard. I replied with a hint of sarcasm. Ah! Denise once told me I was unnecessary because she was there. Desperately, my former mother-in-law admitted, Lori, we're really in trouble. Living on just my pension for the three of us is quite tough. I stated firmly, I have no intention of returning to that house. It must be hard living with all that baggage. She seemed at a loss for words, and seeing her like this made me feel a bit sorry for her. But as I was about to hang up, she seemed eager to say something more. Lori, I'm really sorry. Can you reconsider? Her voice sounded exhausted. I pondered. I wonder if we can ever spend days together with smiles again, huh? Was it that hard without me? I asked, mixing surprise with calmness. After a short pause, she took a deep breath and revealed more distressing news. Yes, there's an issue with the property tax. We might have to let go of the house. The call ended with a heavy silence, leaving me to reflect on the complex dynamics of the family I had left behind and the new life I had embraced. I see, I said, although I didn't want any part of it anymore. You'll have to decide what to do with your family. I hung up before she could say anything else and set up my phone so I wouldn't receive any more calls from her. Back in my room, holding my favorite mug filled with aromatic coffee, I relished my solitude. Gazing out at the scenery, a spontaneous smile crossed my face. A few months later, as I passed by the cafe where Matthew used to work, I noticed it was now quiet and empty. Remembering its past liveliness made me feel a bit nostalgic. It seemed they had closed the shop. While wandering around the old town, I grew curious about what had become of my former in-law's house. To my surprise, I saw a sold sign outside. By chance, I bumped into an old neighbor who filled me in. The three had quickly sold their house and moved to a small apartment nearby. In their new home, loud arguments were frequent, and there was even talk about the smell of garbage, becoming a bit of local gossip. It sounded tough for them, but I thought about how a little effort could change one's circumstances. I wondered why they didn't try. As I looked at the old house, these thoughts wandered through my mind. A lot has happened since then, but I'm living each day to the fullest. Recently, a handsome guy from my workplace confessed his admiration for my hardworking nature. 
Now we're enjoying our dates, and I'm really looking forward to what the future holds. If I get married again, I want it to be truly happy. Thinking about all this, I felt a surge of excitement for the future, 